Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Royal Drawing School's Creative Conversation Series. Tonight, I'm, well, I'm delighted to welcome the artists Genius Tag Tagizadi and Roshi Ruzbahani to discuss their practice as part of a broader conversation about contemporary women artists in Iran and the history of protest. And it's an important moment, of course, to be having this conversation in the context of the women, life, freedom revolution in Iran, and a privilege to have Jinus and Roshi as speakers to share their experiences and insights. So welcome to you both. Um, and I'd just like to um, introduce you both a little more. Um, Jinus was born in Tehran and studied graphic design, dramatic literature and sculpture. And in the past three decades, um, she's worked as an interdisciplinary artist, taking part in numerous exhibitions internationally uh, and in Iran. And um, she's been active in the fields of stage and costume design for theatre and puppetry, um, children's book illustrations and ceramics. And since 2001, she's also been an art critic um, and essay writer for independent art magazines and has published three books. She's also known as an activist for civil rights and environmental issues and her struggle against censorship in Iran. Roshi is um, an Iranian fr freelance illustrator born and raised in Tehran and, and now based in London. She's worked with The New Yorker, The Guardian, The Washington Post and BBC 100 Women and creates editorial and portrait illustrations about social issues. She's passionate about gender equality and women's empowerment and um, that's at the centre of her work. She's also participated in many group exhibitions in, in Europe and Iran, and her works has been um, featured in Creative Boom, Design Week, um, and the Middle East Eye, among others. And she's the author of 50 Inspiring Iranian Women. So it's wonderful to have um, two um, of the many um, inspiring Iranian women with us uh, this evening. Thank you. And um, I'd just like to ask you both to, um, to unmute if you can. There we go. Wonderful. Hi there. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being here. And I know we've got some really fantastic images to, to share. Okay. So. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, uh, thank you so much everyone for spending your time with us. Zenus and I are happy to be here and be honored to uh, introduce our works and other Iranian female artists that has created artworks uh, regarding and in support of the Women Life Freedom Revolution that is happening in Iran that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It's uh, more than 100 days, it's actually more than four months that is happening and it still is going on. And in today's session, we are going to uh, focus on the uh, artworks that are uh, using image and text to actually uh, show their support and amplify the voice of people in Iran. So uh, we are focusing on drawings, illustrations and paintings. And um, so I know there are many other forms of art that, uh, that uh, an artist that has been using their art to uh, support this movement, but unfortunately we don't have enough time and we are just focusing on the, uh, those that uh, use image and text to do this. Uh, but just before we start, I just want to um, share some images of the uh, actual protest that is happening in Iran and the uh, the works of art of some anonymous artists and anonymous art students that have uh, used the public space to show their support and to actually uh, say to the regime that what's going on and to fight back. So uh, I start with this video maybe some of you have seen it it's been quite viral and um, maybe this girl wasn't supposed to do so but I think it's kind of a performance and a dance in support of this revolution I think you can can you hear the, the, the audio But yeah, as you can see, uh, uh, this girl was just dancing and then throwing her scarf in the fire to say to the face of the government that's what we are and what we are looking for. 
The other piece that you have, you can see in the uh, middle on the top row is uh, the fountains dyed in red color. And as if the water is, uh, the fountains are uh, filled with blood. And it's the, to say that, okay, we know that many protesters have been uh, injured, have been killed, many people are being arrested. And uh, we want to say, okay, everyone can see it now and you can't hide anything. Similar concept is on the right hand side. You can see some red nooses um, being hanged from the branches of the tree in the parks, in the public areas. And to say, okay, this is uh, this is the execution that you're doing. You can't hide it, even though you are cutting off the internet, but we are creating this so people in the street can see it, people around the world can see it. And again, another one that I think it was uh, in the, it was happening in the, Tehran Art University, the students actually converted the campus to a cemetery and they used these um, uh, stones that they colored in red again to show mm -hmm. the blood that they, they to show that okay uh, these are the people of so this is just a symbol of so many people that have been injured and killed and uh, you are trying to hide but we, we, we don't let you and um, unfortunately until now it's around and I think more than 600 people that have been killed including 70 children so um, the government tried its best to cover it up, but they couldn't. And I think part of it is because of the artists that they're shouting. And uh, then the, another one that you can see in this um, slide is actually one of the graffitis of so many graffitis that are happening around. Although this, it is very dangerous act because if uh, government find this, uh, these people that are doing the graffitis, they're going to be arrested, and they don't, uh, and no one knows how what will happen to them. So uh, after this uh, rather long uh, introduction, we want to go through the some of the works that have uh, been created uh, under the name of protest arts. And just before seeing what was creating, uh, uh, what was created in the uh, for the current actually revolution, uh, Genus will take a step back and have a look at some of the female artists that have been creating arts in uh, regarding to. <laughs> political and social situations in Iran before this revolution and how they were showing um, how the government is actually oppressed people. But again, the artists are um, raising their voice and this and in um, in this regard, some of the artists are using basically lines, drawings and painting to show that. So Genus, please. Thank you, Rushi. Uh, hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to, with you. Uh, perhaps with the voice of uprising in the women life freedom movement, um, an important part of Iranian art that has political and social concern has been raised for the first time. But in all these years, many artists, especially women artists, have been showing their political approach um, in their artworks. Uh, these artworks present their way of thinking about art, uh, which has been intervened with uh, the views of history, politics, and civil movements. The artists that um, the market never paid attention to enough. Um, here are some of those who have used drawing medium uh, the most. The first one, Parasu Furuhar, is one of the important artists and also an activist whose uh, her entire career has been associated with protest and resistance against the system. Her parents were famous political activists who were brutally killed in series of political murders in 1998. Paras's artwork has and activities uh, have always been the, uh, in the struggle with forgetting both when she uh, has been traveling to Iran every 24 years after her parents were murdered from her living country, Germany, to hold the ceremony and to show this resistance in a performative way. And her visual artworks that um, depict uh, bodies trying to be freed or in torture, 
but is as an important element that all of the totalitarian systems, Islamic regime as well, uh, wants to control and tie up. Um, Mojgan Bakhtiari uh, is another artist who is always challenging official rules, uh, rules especially about women and official histo historiography in her artwork, which is based on drawing. Uh, for example, in the series that um, she exhibited in 2009, she showed her family photos in combination with plants, with roots and uh, rhizomes, uh, along with the text of anti-feminist laws in Islamic Republic. In my interpretation uh, of this artwork, she challenged the relationship between the laws of nature and the laws of fundamental government. In, or in uh, the other series um, in 2019 and uh, 2021, she drew documentary photos of uh, 1979 revolution in Iran. In all these photos, the masses of people were moving toward the carnivorous flower in a disordered, in a disordered and uh, hypnotized way, which was pulling them toward it. Uh, or they were unaware of the huge mass of the stone hanging above their heads. In most of her artwork, she combines documentary images with surreal image of the spirit of that situation. Um, maybe you read and seen a very famous comic book, uh, Perspolis. The creator of uh, this book is Marjan Satrapi, uh, an Iranian artist who lives in France. Uh, she narrated the story of the political and cultural evolution of Iran through the eye of a young girl, her childhood up to her early adult years in Iran and Austria during and after Islamic revolution. This is a kind of autobiography and book is filled with moments of joy and grief and very, very smart sense of humor about some taboos in Iran called Iranian culture and the Islamic regime as well. Uh, she made an animated movie with her drawing later that maybe you watch it. Um, I can consider myself one of the Iranian artists who reflect my political and social concern in my artworks. I call myself an artist and a storyteller. So most of my artworks are a combination of writing and images that tries to narrate uh, something very personal and at the same, same time, very political. Um, for example, um, many years ago, I read an article about three dogs in Greece, which English speaking media called them riot dogs. Um, three stray dogs um, that's accompanying uh, street protesters in Athens, Greece, in the aftermath of uh, 2008 financial crisis. They have been observed by protesters and photographers. They always try to stay on the protesters' side, not the police's. Um, they do based on the instinct to choose the right side to support. Years later, when I reviewed photos and documents about the student, uh, student uh, uprising in Iran in 1998, when I was a student in Fine Art Faculty of Tehran, I find out a simple similarity between me and maybe my generation and those dogs. Yeah, we both uh, don't have political science. We just trust our instinct 
to find our political party. We trust to our conscience for protesting against uh, injustice. So I printed a correspondence image of newspaper of uh, that time and drew the riot guards on it. About my current uh, arts works in this movement, I talk later and ask Roshi to continue. Sure. Thank you so much, Yunus. Uh, okay, so before we jump to the works that has been created for the uh, Women Life uh, Freedom Revolution, I just wanted to share some of my works that uh, I was uh, creating before this uh, current revolution and uh, actually it's, it's, a, it's a good step before because the next step that we're going to go through is um, the first category of the works that has been creating and these are the uh, memorial portraits of people. Uh, in, in these selections of more work, as you can see, these people, all of them have been um, killed by the government in different ways. Uh, maybe you are familiar with Neda or Sultan if you've been following the grief move movement in Iran and the other faces that uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Iranian are familiar with them uh, that have been killed in different ways uh, from flight um, um, 752 or uh, in the protests and everything. I, uh, I don't want to go through every of them, but I just want to say that um, creating the portraits of people is just a way of honoring them and uh, to keep their memories alive. And uh, I think for myself, when you focus on the faces of these people, when you uh, put your pencils or in my case, your uh, digital pen to uh, go and um, paint these faces, you're actually getting more familiar. It's like uh, another deeper connection with these people. And it's like you're keeping them alive for yourself and for the viewers to say, okay, we shouldn't remember these people. And if we get anywhere with this revolution and in any protest we should just remember them and how they um, actually um, uh, lose their, their love, life to um, get us and uh, it's um, so it's, sorry it's very emotional topic to talk about but um, um, okay uh, so, so just let's go to the first category of the uh, the works that has been created, and this is actually really similar to these works that I've been creating, because many artists chose to use uh, iconography and memorial portraits just to, as I said, to keep record of the uh, many people that have been killed, and um, so um, I think it's a good step to, uh, to more talk about the iconography and the history of it in Iran, and I think Genius can explain more, please. Thank you, Yoshi. Um, the artwork of this period have very important and obvious aspects, uh, which I see a subcategory of reclaiming something confiscated, actually. If I say more clearly, we try to give back lots of things that they gave us during 24 years, exactly like women's rights and life, and freedom. Um, some medium that they forced us to neglect completely. Um, they um, confiscated many things from us and we appraised to get them back. Uh, to explain this, I have to give a short introduction um, about iconography. Iconography, which we call chamoyel, as a visual religious traditions has a history in Iranian Islamic art for many years. Although Islamic saints have always been faceless and um, the faces of religious martyrs are always in the form of icon in our visual tradition. After a 1979 revolution and especially after the war, uh, the images of the martyrs were everywhere as official icons in propaganda. They occupied all public spaces with their prisons, huge pictures of um, political leaders and the uh, approved mart martyrs by government appear on billboards and city murals. Their faces in the form of official photos uh, are repeated and um, 
um, in the lives of Iranian people from big cities to the smallest village on the streets, plugs, to school books and TV program everywhere. Uh, these images are all men in a completely official image like identity card photos, um, head, heads without bodies and without human exp um, expression. Images that were deprived of their individual identity and were supposed to represent only the concept of sacrifice and martyrdom for the cause of Islam or charismatic leadership. Um, many of uh, the artwork of this period are representation of uh, the faces of the murdered, but in extremely personal and human situation that try to return all that individuality that was removed from them, to them and through them to us. In a way, in this type of artworks, um, which are produced at the, an incredible speed and in large numbers, we are faced with um, appropriation of the imposed uh, concept of iconography a kind of re-iconography or self-construction of uh, the faceless face of um, official heroes in contrast to earthly face with individual and human identity and full of life with the, these current heroes. Those who never wanted to be heroes, but just long for an ordinary life. That was very emphasis um, on um, individual agency in plural concept. Uh, these icons are not looking for victimization as a common in Shi'i uh, culture and are in praise of the way each of these individuals has lived without any sanctification. These are exactly the opposite of religious iconography and at the same time in serious uh, contradiction with a form of socialist realism of uh, the art books of 1979 revolution which was modeled on Latin America and the less so on Soviet Union and uh, China. Thank you so and, uh, much. I think, uh, Roshi, your work uh, is about iconography as well. Yes, yeah, sure. It, um, um, I think many of the artworks that I've created for this uh, current revolution and before it is uh, iconography, because I think um, I uh, we don't want to forget each of these people because uh, in this brutal regime when they go like nearly 600 people being killed including 70 children as i said and we don't want them to be just numbers we just want to remember each of them mm -hmm. I, I know some of them become more iconic i mean for example as you can see um, um, on the on the above um, this is the Hassin Ari was just a child in Baluchistan and she was just uh, killed being a child and she wasn't doing anything. And beside him, he was, it, it was a, a guy who was named Khodanur. Uh, his, his dance, as we can see in Sahar Danishi artworks, uh, gone viral. He was, as, as we know about him, he was a um, happy guy. He was just living in a poor area of Baluchistan and he was in the protest just to taking his rights but now he's dead and he was brutally killed and we don't want to you know forget each of them so I think iconography is a great way to say that okay we are keeping the memories of all of you alive and we don't forget you basically um okay so the another category of the wars that has been done in this um uh, current revolution uh we're focusing on the iconic photos and moments that are happening in the revolution and people were trying uh, to uh, i mean artists were trying to recreate these um, moments by their own visual language as you can see for example in this set of images uh artists um, created those um, scenes of the protest 
since that people have been killed and uh, um, uh, this child on the right is mourning for his father that has been killed in the protest. So uh, every everything that was uh, happening in Iran, artists wanted to record it, especially with the internet being cut off. They wanted to say, okay, we, we gonna, we're gonna keep the record of it forever. You can't just um, delete the images or hide them from, from the world. We are gonna uh, amplify these images and amplify the voice of people and to show the world that what you're doing to the innocent peoples. Um, there were some uh, moments that were uh, really historical, I think, in this um, in this movement. And um, as you, I'm sure you're aware of, uh, one of the things that became the symbol of this revolution was uh, women cutting hair. That's actually, I'm going to talk more about it in the, um, the coming slides. But uh, the, the woman you can see in my work and in Shadi's work up here, uh, this girl is actually the daughter of one of the uh, people that been killed, Minu Majidi. And uh, she was, uh, she, there, there, this was this strong and powerful uh, image of her that she was standing on her mother's grave and she cut at her hair, having her hair in her hand. And uh, you could see her face that is so powerful, so strong and said, okay, if you're gonna fight me, I'm ready. And, I, I, and you can't make, break me basically. And uh, I'm gonna fight back. Or the other image that you can see, um, uh, on the bottom row in my work and Mansoure Bakhgarai and Ghazale Bahirai is uh, this was again a, a photo of a woman one of the many actually that been shot by this um, I think it's similar something like not not an actual gun but it's something like we use in paintball basically but if you shot it from a very um, not from a distance and very close to the person it's going to stay in your body and uh, here uh, we try to be own, our own language show this and say okay this is what you're doing to the body of the woman you want to hide the body of the woman you want to uh, cover the hair of a woman but now you are seeing a full body of this woman and she's naked and you the world can see so you can't uh, we are autonomous in with our body we can do whatever we want and you want to stop us basically uh, in these other sets of images that I've created, um, I, I think if I go through the um, all of the details, it will take a long time, but I'm just going really quickly. The one here that um, I actually is appropriation of uh, the great wave of uh, Kanagawa by Hakasai is uh, I use this great wave as a symbol to say, okay, the executions in Iran is gonna destroy the country if you want to stop it. And everyone in around the world can see how brutal this um, regime is going to actually fight back the people because they've been uh, hanged, they, they, there are records of people being hanged because just putting a garbage can on fire. And that's that's ridiculous. And uh, many people are actually now in the fear of losing their life. So these executions have to stop. And we just want to say the word, okay, please help us to stop this execution. Or the one on the right hand side on the bottom row, uh, you may wonder why a sanitary pad, what was that one doing in this uh, revolution? But I think it's actually, it was a really great moment in this revolution. Uh, it was a, it was some photos and a uh, video from Tehran that uh, people were uh, protesting inside the underground stations and forces were uh, trying to have a look at them. And as you can see, there are so many uh, CCTVs going on. So people in the underground trains were trying to cover these CCTVs with sanitary pad. And I think it's remarkable because sanitary pad is, uh, can be a, a very strong symbol. It's just a very basic, um, normal object, but now it's just like a weapon for this uh, revolution. And I think it's brilliant in this uh, feminist revolution. And uh, so before I go to the other ones, I'm just going to the uh, work of Genus. I just want to show you uh, this great banner. It was uh, created by this uh, anonymous group of people. They go under the name of LCC. And this banner was, uh, I think it was in France, if I'm not wrong, or Berlin, I'm not sure about it. But this, uh, the artists try to show every important move, um, actually actions and situations that led to this uh, final revolution. So people before this revolution maybe they're looking for reform, but now after 
there's many things that happened, uh, student revolution, green movement, and everything. They just now want everything to be different. They don't. They are. They are not looking for reform. They want to change everything. So um, we are going to the uh, great, amazing work of Genius Is um, is um... we can talk about my work. Sure, no, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's not easy to look at every one of them, but uh, in this yeah. picture, I just wanted to show the scale of it. And yeah. I think there are more of these that we are looking at. But in this ones, you can see some of the details and how Genius used text and image to. Uh, actually recreate the things and you know just to um, basically Genius is going to talk about it but her approach to this. Uh, it is just um, a notebook that I started to write about something that happened in the first days of this protest. I can't say this revolution. Uh, um, and um, I just wrote and drew and after one month, I thought it's maybe a way to think about this uh, process and remind this process. It's just a daily note. And that's this. Great, but yeah, they are a piece of art because I think using image and text is, and is quite personal, which is something that is personal, but is political in a sense. So that's that's great, I guess. And at first, what um, when I started to write and I tell them what maybe I want to publish, mm. at first I started to write in pen name and with another name. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, it, it was just like story mm. that was a little bit real with a um, little bit not real and fiction something mm. but after one month i decided to write with my name and my experience and uh, finding some moments that maybe um, will neglect in social media but it's very personal very touchy that maybe you just write about it in your personal network. Mm, great. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so we are going to the uh, last category of the works that we are showing, and it's uh, regarding the women's rights. Uh, many artists actually uh, use this approach to show the women's rights uh, and said, okay, women's rights is human rights. And uh, what you're going to see is how, how this artist approached this to show that, okay, maybe this revolution started with um, a brutal killing of Mahsa Amini because she was showing a bit of her hair but it's more than that, it's not just a hair. And if a hair is a attribution to femininity, okay, now we're gonna cut it, what you gonna do next? So I think it's just a female empowerment you can see in this picture. And as you can see on the, the one on the right, uh, the, the artists want to say, okay, maybe this generation, we're gonna cut our hair, we're gonna leave our, um, our wings for the next generation. We are doing this for the next generation to have a better life. And uh, the ones on the right, on the left, as you can see, the, the artists actually use the text and image again and she's playing with the words zan, zendegi, azadi, which means women, life, freedom, to show what, what this revolution is about. We are, we are fighting for women's rights. We want to live freely. And she, she was just trying to uh, say this with the, some symbols and actually combining them. Um, this other set of the images that you see, there were many images again, um, uh, similar to this that's showing the anger and showing that okay we are angry enough is enough is enough and uh, we are not gonna uh, uh, as I said we don't want to reform we are just not going to say okay you're gonna because uh, as you may know Massa Amini uh, was um, was got with, with something that we call uh, um, morality police is something called Gashte Irshad, and uh, she was just being arrested, kind of arrested because uh, 
she was showing a bit of her hair and this is happening to many people that many uh, women that live in Iran and um, they, they had these experiences but people were just before this revolution people were saying okay maybe some reforms people were just saying okay maybe this cash the Irshad or morality so-called morality police will go and we will um, live more happily but I think now women are saying okay no that's the least of things we want we want more of that and we are quite angry and as you can see in Marjan Vafoyan's artwork we are the scissors we are going to cut you so um, this this scissors become a symbol not just in cutting their hair we are cutting all the things that you are doing to us as women and people and these other uh, sets of uh, works that you can see, um, as you can see, Marjana Sotropi is working her new works in the middle, and um, she's getting into more color, and she's using this color of red. Uh, and I think you can see this color of red uh, in many of the artworks, because I think you agree that the red is the loudest color of all, and it's con it has connotation with anger, with blood, and to it, it wants to have an impact on people. And you can't really, uh, um, not noticing the red. So I think red is quite important in these works, as you can see. Uh, but um, there are very some other artists like Furuzan Safari that um, she used black and white because I think, again, black and white is quite uh, powerful in these wars full of color. Sometimes black and white just have this impact on us. And she's actually imagining the future, imagining the life that maybe many of us are living uh, in this uh, when we are living in a democratic society. But in some countries like uh, Iran that you are living uh, under a patriarchal regime, actually, you are not, you can't do any of them. You can't wear whatever you want. You can't um, go, uh, get your dog to walk. You can't, um, so LGBTQs rights are absolutely not acceptable. So uh, she is actually imagining how the future can be if this regime is gone. And uh, these other, actually, these are the uh, last set of works that we are going to uh, see today is again uh, my works and uh, Sarira Merihi and Mansour Bogari and again uh, in in all of them Harris has quite important role and uh, the one on the right I, I, I I've done it for the uh, Guardian Weekly cover and it's it's basically saying okay um, now with the the hair is the weapon that we've got and we are going we are we are coming for you actually and um, as you can see in other in previous works and here the color the colors of our flag which is red green and white is very repeated in the works we say okay we we care about our country and the flag is us is ours not the government and we are claiming it and uh, I just wanted to specifically talk about this work of Mansoure Bogari you can see on the above because she's using the actual hair for creating it mm. and I think it's quite powerful because she asked people to cut their hair and they just gave um, their hair to her and she created this amazing powerful face and you know showing the middle finger to the government and showing the sign of victory and say okay Okay, this hair that you were trying for decades, uh, for uh, you were just uh, asking brutally <laughs> uh, women to cover this. Now we are getting back to you with exactly the same hair. And if this hair we cut from our hair is returning to our its place, you're gonna come back to your place. It's not possible. So you can't really get back to earlier before this revolution. Um, I guess that's all we wanted to do, but uh, Genius and I really wanted to uh, dedicate this talk to uh, Nico Shahkarami and one of the uh, young teenage girls that lost her life in this revolution. And what you see in this slide is actually her works uh, on the rise. And uh, she was doing her aunt's Atash Shah Karami. Uh, she's a great painter from Iran, and she was just doing these hands of uh, her aunt. And um, it's quite sad and um, very <laughs> it's really emotional to think about it that these hands actually they, they were they haven't been she didn't have the time to finish them because she was brutally killed in the protest. 
and um, she, she, I'm sure if she was alive, she could be a great artist. She was a young woman that she was living her life. And if she was living in a more democratic society, she could be alive. And we, we, we haven't been actually <laughs> talking about her. She just wanted to make a better world for herself and us and just through sang, dance, normal life. Exactly. And one day, went out from home and never come back. Exactly. So I'm, um, thank you, Roshi, that uh, we dedicate this meeting to Nika, that could be one of the students of this last meeting, one day. Exactly, yeah. So I think it's a great way to finish our presentation with Nika singing. And as you can see, she was just a normal teenage girl, wanted to have a normal life. But she joined the protest. She was a brave woman. You can see her videos. She was just uh, fighting and uh, throwing her scarves out. So, but uh, but unfortunately now she's dead. But we are going to keep her memories alive. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone for listening and um, I guess yeah we are done with our presentation but um, if um, anyone have a question we're going to answer that. Thank you, thank you both so much. What a what a moving um, conversation and um, yeah you've I, I feel you've really taken us on this kind of extraordinary journey through so many so many powerful images and such a range of images as well. Um, and, and also really fascinating to hear your reflections on, I suppose, how the history of protest is kind of informing and feeding into the current um, visual work that's being made now um, and, and part of the current um, protest. So, so thank you, really, really wonderful. Thank you. And um, uh, yes, we, we, we welcome um, questions and, and thoughts um, from, from everyone listening, if you'd like to share um, any thoughts or, or, or um, pose any questions and um, we've got um, a little while for that. Um, maybe I can just mm, start off, but um, I was just really struck in, in the clip that you played by the, you know, it's incredibly sad, but also the power of laughter and there was laughter at the beginning. Um, and, you know, so many of the images you showed um, stimulate anger and, um, you know, sorrow as well um but also some of them are you know deeply satirical and and humor is such a weapon isn't it um and i just wondered maybe if you could reflect on on the way that you can use humor subversively and and satire and how you do that in your own work <clears throat> sorry uh sure i think um for me i mean um Beside, I mean, just maybe the works that I've been that I've done for with the sanitary pad. The others are actually quite serious because, oh sorry, uh, they're quite serious because this revolution is for me is still really uh, serious. Maybe you know, in later time, I can come back and reflect into it. But for now, I think uh, I'm I'm ex like many other Iranians. Uh, I'm experiencing many different emotions, but I think for me the strongest was is anger. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say with my words and convey the word is see this anger and you know acknowledge this anger. But as you said, I think humor is a very uh, good way of doing this. And I think for me, the, the sanitary pad is, was like uh, kind of humorous because as I said, it's like this very normal object that is um, daily used is gone, is, is became a symbol of this revolution. And, you know, uh, I think it's, it's actually 
right in the face of the government that they want to hide anything related to femininity, everything related to women. And but they say, OK, something because, you know, for example, in Iran and I think in many other maybe Middle Eastern countries or Turkey, I know uh, uh, sanitary pads are um, if you if you go to a shop to buy it, they will put it in a very uh, black bag and, and they give it to you something it's like it's something really bad and you shouldn't okay. really talking about anything and it's like a taboo so uh, i think it's just in the face of the government that said okay no we are taking the pads out of our uh, our bags we are just putting in a very public place we are just putting it on the cctv so um, as i said it's really um i think it's a strong uh, move actually just to say okay <laughs> now we, we are taking our rights back um, uh, I can add something uh, about maybe 18 years ago, I started a, a series of artwork uh, that was uh, some kind of swing, broodry uh, on sanitary pads. Mm -hmm. And I remember in that time, and until now, I never could show it in galleries at mm -hmm. all. That was... And for my generation, especially, is very interesting that something that we never um, could show in our artwork is in public spaces. They show that as a kind of breaking taboos, and it's new. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, as you said, something that is quite new in this um, revolution is how courageous and how brave this young generation are. They are, they are really much more brave than us, but the uh, previous generations, and they are just, they are not afraid of anything. And that's why I think they are fighting back. And that's why it's more than four months that, you know, people are still fighting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions, um, well, quite a few questions coming in um, from the audience. And um, uh, I suppose one that leads on from probably your kind of celebration of the, the younger generation um, is, um, uh, do you have any thoughts on how the oppression of visual arts education and the cultural revolution in the 80s has affected the current rush of grassroots revolutionary art? Mm. Um, mm. I, uh, I think maybe Genius can speak more about it because, uh, you know, um, I didn't study art in, back in Iran and I just studied art when, when I came here to UK and actually I chose it that because I wanted to have a visual language, to have a, like a language to break through the language barriers basically and mm -hmm. it's something that everyone can understand, but um, I'm sure um, I'm not sure about the education system, as I said, maybe Genus can talk more about it, but I think uh, social media and internet has really great impact on the people, especially Gen Z, because they were born by internet and they've seen other places, they've seen how other people are living normally, and they know that in other countries living in democratic society, how you can live and how you can express yourself, so I think they, they can see that, okay, the normal life without oppression, how, is how is it under um, you know in uh, when you're living in a democratic society many things are normal you can't really think of okay um, this is something uh, weird that I'm doing but when you are uh, under this uh, uh, patriarchal regime many things can should be hidden many things are you are not allowed to do but I think the internet has really uh, quite impactful effect on the younger generation but uh, I don't know if Genius can add to that uh, how these uh, educational systems maybe help it, help the new generation? Well, now it's completely different with uh, when I studied uh, art in Iran because um, some of the subjects and uh, some parts of art, history of art completely was forbidden. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any uh, course or program about contemporary art. We just try to find ourselves before internet. You can imagine how <laughs> that was really difficult. Sorry, something, <laughs> the voice. Um, but this generation is completely different with internet. 
and also I remember in uh, during of um, uh, COVID, lots of uh, program was online with um, another professor, not official professor of uh, Art University Iran, some individual person that uh, uh, student uh, invite them to their um, room and has um, more and very effective, I think, um, program with them. Um, but um, I can imagine this much creativity between this generation is with their effort and their really hard working. And most of them is not related to the system of uh, the university. Mm. And because of that, I have very big respect for all of this student and this generation. There's a there's a kind of big question, I suppose, to to you both, which is um, uh, from Natasha Monfred, um, who um, who's also an Iranian artist, um, who who describes um, making work around the current events and and sees this as her way of contributing to the process. So so she's asking, um, do you think protest art will be able will be able to change the revolution? Mm. Uh, I think so. I think uh, art has this power, as we can see, you know, in the history of art and actually in the uh, history of female art, there have mm -hmm. been many, uh, you know, powerful art forms that they are just not actually telling the story of what's happening. They are just calling for a change. And for example, I think many of these works that you've seen and uh, they're using image and text, they can remind you of, you know, those um, uh, banners that has been used in the revolution before in other countries also. And uh, I think these are really important because they, they can, you are um, directly without needing any translation, you are just um, amplifying the message of people. And I think it's art has this power to quite directly um, just uh, connect with many people, you know, in a broad audience. And I guess um, sometimes uh, images are very more powerful than words, and they can be uh, very uh, powerfully have impact on people that are uh, seeing them, especially, you know, I think with social media, we are living in this social media era, and many of them went viral, and people are going to think about it, and they're going to uh, reshare it, and sometimes people uh, feel shameful if they are not included in it, so they are going to, you know, do something about it, and I think, um, yes, uh, uh, the um, the role of the art here is not just reflecting and echoing what is happening, but I think it has this power to actually amplifying the voice and actually changing the status quo. Yes, and I was it was I was struck by um, you know the image the, the murals also that you that you showed because you know even if you couldn't get on to social media or even if um you know something was blocked that mm. people might encounter those images in 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 public spaces and and that sort of your discussion around kind of reclaiming those spaces and and the sort of sur satirical images where they would be subverting you know the propagandist portrait or whatever or um and sort of yeah, yeah that was that was really um yeah exactly and i think there were many hand drawn banners actually you can mm. see in the videos that people were just hanging them from the bridges in the streets at at night that everything is dark and they are not going to be recognized so people are actually putting their life into it but you know they are not um specifically exactly. artists but they are using the images to mm. uh, to actually um this uh, convey this message to other people mm. Yeah, it's interesting to think about drawing as a as a tool in that in that exactly. way. Exactly. Mm. Um, just turn back to the, the question from the audience. Um, uh, a sort of yeah, it's a question about both your practice, um, uh, which is what will, what inspired you to start doing these artworks in the first place. Another big question. <laughs> so, uh, Genius, do you want to start with this one? No. no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think, as I said, you know, um, 
this um, as someone that you know is living in diaspora and I'm not living inside Iran I think this is uh, for me it's like a responsibility basically because I think everyone in uh, any place that they are, they should do something for this revolution. And I, as an illustrator, want to use my illustration to pay tribute to people that have been killed, people have been in, uh, arrested, or uh, recreate those uh, iconic moments to uh, basically uh, convey, okay, this is what's happening in the real world. And we are, uh, we are, uh, because you know, sometimes it's it's like living in two worlds when you are in diaspora. Mm -hmm. Because, um, for example, in these past few months, I woke up in every morning just checking my mobile just to see if anyone was executed in the morning. Mm -hmm. And although we, we have this, uh, you know, um, time difference with Iran, I woke up really early in the morning just to make sure. Okay, and then say, okay, no one was executed today. Oh, oh God, no, it it happened. So I think for many people it's like that. So I think it's something. Um, uh, quite emotional and you want to do something and as you know many artists are more emotional person and uh, this is uh, this is a way of putting these emotions on a paper and say um, I'm using my art as a weapon basically uh, mm -hmm. during this current revolution I was trying to do it before this revolution and I'm going to continue and I think for many artists it's the same. Yeah. For me it's a little bit different I'm not very fast which reflects, um, I'm not that kind of artist. And imagine um, I was, seven, I, I had seven years of, um, old when um, revolution in 1979 happened in Iran. And after 30 years, I <laughs> made some <laughs> artwork about that. I could talk about my experience about uh, the revolution in childhood and um, I think this artwork that I make in this time, now I'm creating, is just a way of thinking. And I think my artwork will show um, to myself, <laughs> before everyone, uh, maybe later, mm. something must to Think now. Um, yeah, digest <laughs> in my mind right. after. But so this kind of diary notes about revolution and something that now I'm um, drawing or writing, I think is just some sketch to mm. remind everything to a way of thinking just that, not mm. more than it. Uh, and I don't know, maybe some year, years later, I don't want to show it at hmm. all. Just something for reminding or something for a daily practice about this movement. But I don't know about, um, I don't know, maybe later I can make something that completely different. <laughs> yeah, it was extraordinary to see it. Um, thank you for sharing that that um, image of your 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 diary notes um, or um, and seeing the interplay between the word and image um, there was, yeah, it's really, really fascinating to see that interplay, mm. that conversation that's also so important in your work. Um, and um, perhaps there's a, there's a last question um, which, uh, um, from um, Sharman Kaniz, um, who is expressing gratitude for your conversation and, and asks whether there'll be um, an upcoming exhibition um, of all the visual work that you've, that you've shared. Um, I think, uh, uh, sorry, um, I, I, uh, there, there have been some exhibitions actually around the world with this, with some of the works. Um, mine actually was, um, I think, it, uh, one was in two actually were in USA one was in Canada they were one was in Italy and they were just you know printing these images very simply and they just put it on the wall not no frame or anything some fancy but um I'm thinking of actually doing something maybe big and you know just 
uh, do something with this, all of these works. There, there are many, many artworks. Actually, as you can see, the social media was flooded with these works. But um, I guess, as as uh, as Jinu said, in the future we're gonna see many, many artworks creating and uh, you know reflecting in this um, this revolution. And I guess, uh, yeah. So in the in the near or later future, we're gonna see some exhibitions, right? I hope one day we don't want to talk about yeah. something like this. Mm. All right, yeah. In a very ordinary situation in freedom, you don't feel this kind of responsibility, mm. heaviness of responsibility on your shoulder to do this. Okay. I, I'm, I wish a time that you can uh, paint or draw something that does you like to do, <laughs> <laughs> not you feel you have to this is your responsibility to mm, mm. exactly for that thing. <laughs> yeah i think for the artists living under you know a um, non-democratic regime it's like it's always like this responsibility as you said uh, a burden on your shoulders that you should do something and uh, but I hope someday, as you know, said, uh, when we are living in a democratic society, maybe our subject of art will change. Thank you. Thank you both for sharing these reflections and, and images. It's been a really powerful conversation. Thank you. And thank you to everyone listening and for your thoughts and, and questions also. Thank you both. Thank you.